Yeah, indeed. Thank you, John. I'm going to talk about dough based special edit creation using smartphones or mobile phones. So today I'm going to talk about a bit uh, of background of the project, so why I choose this project, and why I think that it's re it could be really useful for uh, creators. Uh, it, this will let me to explain the aims and objectives of the project. I will do an overview of ARKit, uh, including a live demo. And finally, I will talk about the next step that they have to, to take and an overview of the sound plans. So starting from the beginning, special audio creation. So what's that? 3D audio, special audio, immersive sound, which has lots of names, but it mostly means the same. So uh, the concept is that you are immersed in a 360 audio environment, like the real life, so you can recreate uh, a sound field like Ben, like ben said, with the Sonics or whatever uh, method you use. So here you know, we have several examples. For example, the audio lab. So we have uh, these 50 speakers week, and also lots of uh, researchers researching in a, a special audio um, codex creation and all that stuff. So we also have uh, the Rima, where we are now. So we have this uh, 16 speaker week, which is mostly used for music. So the other one maybe was most used for research purposes, um, and this one maybe for more artistic ones. We also held here in York uh, two months ago the conference, international conference uh, in special audio and immersive sound. So all these people is the leading people in the sec in the in the industry, uh, but all these people and also <coughs> most of you will need uh, some tools to work with special audio to create them to, to control special audio. So some of the tools uh, that more uh, that are more widely used nowadays are the plugins. So it's a piece of software that is embedded to uh, digital audio workstation, and then you can process the audio with this. So normally you have to use these uh, knobs to control the rotation and the elevation, uh, and they are representing uh, some kind of uh, 3D representation in a 2D plane, which is the screen. But also, you have to use the mouse, which is also a 2D uh, device. So you are using a 2D movement of the mouse with a 2D screen to control 3D audio. So it's not really handy sometimes. Other professional uh, mixers, like the Avid S6, uh, uses uh, these these joysticks, so these joysticks are quite useful also. But still, one is controlling; it's not really clear. But one is controlling the horizontal plane, and the other one is controlling the vertical plane. So still, both of them are two D tools aiming to control three D audio. So then, the question is obvious: Why not using three D tools to control three D audio? So. The, uh, as I said, the question is really obvious, and I'm not the first person to think about that. So, uh, there's been uh, other uh, projects, like the BBC One, uh, maybe five, year, five or six years ago. They were uh, just trying to control spatial audio using uh, some kind of fancy 3D joystick that you can move a ball like that, and also it has some motors, so you can it can just uh, recall your movements and force you to do the movement that you want. So it was a really interesting project, but uh, it, it, it just go there and it, it, it didn't release as a product, as a commercial product. So it was a, a really a big thing, a heavy, and uh, not all studios can have. Some other projects, not as one, so most, uh, at least three, are using leap motion which is a sensor that you put in your table. And it's quite small, it's like, like that maybe. And it can map your, your fingers, and then you can just drag and drop uh, sources and just move the sources like that. So yeah, it's useful, but you, you're not pushing anything. So you have to, to, to just gestures in the open air. And finally, a commercial project, which is called DRVR, is using a headset, a VR headset and VR controllers. Um, so they are, are you are immersed in, in a VR world, and then in this VR world you have some balls, virtual balls that you can grab with with uh, with with um, 
with the controllers and grab the balls as a sources and just move it around. So you have you are dancing there with with the uh, with the sources in a VR world. It's really it's really cool, but uh, if you have to work maybe eight hours per day using that, it's not maybe the best option. So it's not really comfortable. Or if you have if you are working in something that you have to be quick, uh, if you have to put your head your headset on, just walk the sound then take out the, the, the headset so it's not really a uh, quick way to work. So then, I'm going to try to explore the capabilities of a smartphone to use. So everyone has a smartphone in, in their pockets normally. And it has lots of sensors. It has a uh, lot of capabilities that can be useful to control, uh, to use to control in uh, special areas. So this led me to the aims and objectives, which was Obtain movement data from a smartphone. So I want to move a smartphone and get the data of my movement. Then translate this data to a position of a sound source. So to do that, I will I will need to communicate my smartphone with the with a digital audio workstation. Okay, so these were my aims and objectives. So this is week week two. I went to the library, I stopped my research, I put in Google Scholar or IS library. And I put uh, smartphones controlling special audio, blah, blah, blah. But it was patented by someone else. So <laughs> my, first, <laughs> my, first thought, my, my first thought was, oh, I have to change my project. So <laughs> this, uh, I'm going to fail. So uh, no, I, I, can, I can do that. But I finally read all the pattern that uh, I promise you that was really boring. Uh, all the legal stuff between, uh, um, behind the, the pattern. But, and I found that, in fact, that uh, company in South Africa were using just this movement to control special audio. But also, obviously, the phone, the phone has lots of other, uh, other sensors and other that can be used to control special audio. So I decided to carry on with the, with the project, and uh, I will try to explain <coughs> ARKit capabilities to control special audio. So ARKit is a relatively new technology. It has two or three years old. Um, so it, it can be really useful for special audio, and I will try to explore this, uh, evaluating different methods to control special audio using a smartphone. So, what Apple's ARKit is. Apple's ARKit is an augmented reality development platform uh, that allows the developers to create AR uh, apps in a really, not user, but uh, developer friend friendly way. So Apple give, give the developers a lot of tools to create AR apps. So it combines different sensors of a smartphone like the gyroscope, the accelerometer, the magnetometer, but especially the camera. So it uses the camera to take frame by frame and compare the frames with uh, your movements that is detecting with the other sensors. So the, the main feature of this is the wall tracking. So it can uh, track the world and know where you are, how the things are in the real world to interact with the real world. So it can uh, put some objects there, like the Pokemon Go, so maybe you know it. So it can appear a Pokemon here, or maybe it, it should be something there. And can, you can interact with the real world using that. So you have a central point, and then when you move your phone, you can, uh, so the, the phone, the camera is taking some uh, points on the space, like surfaces, and comparing them frame by frame in your movement. So then you can know exactly where you are in, at, at any time and in relation to the imaginary point at the middle. So for controlling spatial audio, we need polar coordinates instead, but with easy trigonometry, yes, we can yeah, move the phone and translate it uh, to the polar coordinates and then use this data to control spatial audio. So you need the azimuth and the elevation which is uh, with more plugins are used. So to do that, I, I designed a, an, a test, which was basically, instead of an imaginary point at the middle, I used uh, an augmented reality mannequin, a central point. Then I used ARKit 
to get the x, y, and, and z axis, uh, uh, values, sorry, of, in relation to that mannequin, I convert it to polar coordinates, <coughs> and finally I send an OSC message to a door, where in the door I can encode a monosource using the values that I received from the phone. Okay, so now I'm going to test that. Oops, sorry. Here. Yeah, so you can see my phone here. If I open the app. Yeah. So, you can see the axis. This is the virtual axis. And all that... Yeah, say hello then. <laughs> so all that yellow dots. You, can you see the, the yellow dots? Somewhere in the chair? Well, maybe not now. <laughs> yeah, no. So all that yellow dots are the... the the feature points that Apple ARKit is detecting. So if I if I move there, so all the surfaces is detecting all that all the points. So this is the axis. So if I move here, you can see the values are changing. So you have the x, y, and z, and also the translation to azimuth elevation and distance. All the values are in meters, by the way. <coughs> so now I can just add this virtual dummy head at the central point, move around, and get the values. So now, if I want to send this to, to a dock, I can just control any plugin and control audio in an Ambisonics wall, for example. Topant de cap en una i altra soca, avançant d'esma pel camí de l'aigua, se'n ve la vaca tota sola. És cega. D'un cop de roc, llançat amb massa traça, el bailet va buidar-li un ull i en l'altre se li ha posat un tel. La vaca és cega. Ve a veurar-se la font com en solia, més no amb el ferm posat d'altres vegades, ni amb sis companyes, no, ve tot de sol. Ses companyes, pels cingles, per les comes, pel silenci dels prat... Ja, so, it's working pretty well. Let's come back to the slides for a minute. Yeah, so what, are, what, what I have to do now? So this is a method, one method. But as I said before, I want to develop more than one method and try which one is better. So I have to design more methods. Then I will have to, design, to, to define three of that method in this SMA. I don't know if it's called like that, but I will use this, so I will explain it. I will define three methods, with, which are two of them are the extreme ones. So one will be really simple, the S, maybe just moving the phone like that, or maybe just touching the screen to move a sound. Another one will be really advanced, so maybe you have to <coughs> drag a, a, a source here, move you around your room, and leave the source there, and really augmented reality one, so really advanced one, and uh, something in the middle will be the third one. So the intention of this is to, uh, using user tests, uh, define which method is better for each purpose. So maybe uh, one is better for music, another one is better for broadcast, another one is better for cinema. Uh, maybe one is uh, easy to learn, easier to learn, but uh, another one is more accurate or more easy to use when you're learning. So I will have to design user tests to test uh, these uh, three methods. And I will have to run the user tests, so some of them will be run here in the University of York, so all of you are invited to come in. And, and other ones will be run in uh, Emerald in London, so I will have to analyze the data and obviously write the thesis. So, the summer plan, I uh, will start to define um, the methods by the end of June. Then I will spend July developing the app and the user tests, and designing the, the user test. During uh, the, the end of July and mid second or third week of August, I will be running the user test, but not all the day. So at the same time, I will be writing the thesis, and maybe even before that. And finally, last but not least, I will have to proofread uh, the thesis <coughs> during the last days of August on the first day of September. So, uh, in summary, I will explore a kit to control special audio, design the methods, design the run user test, and analyze the data.
Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, do you think the um, the other versions that you develop for testing? Yeah. Um, so in your live demo, there you you were moving the sound sources and, and we were listening. Mm -hmm. Are you wanting your system actually to be a one person system? So the person moving the sound source is also the listener, or do you envisage that it's always going to be two people? Yeah. So the main idea was to 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 be a, a tool for the producer or the musician or technician which is there in the mixing room. So yeah, maybe we'll be the, the main the listener. But in, the, in this example, you have the dummy head there, and you move around the dummy head. But maybe another example would be just uh, scan your, your own head and move the phone around you. <laughs> so there are lots of possibilities that I have to explore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so your industrial partner is Abbey Road, of course, um, and this is obviously quite early days comparatively, but do you know what their sort of plan is for this sort of technology? Is it to yeah. keep it sort of in-house, <laughs> like the BBC, yeah. or roll it out to a more commercial basis? They were interested in that, but I don't know exactly <laughs> the final purpose. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks Thank you. Okay.